just let out your praise Sing out your own song Pour out my love on you. 
Lord, you are worthy of all of my praise. Lord, you are worthy. So I won't hold back.
just found You're filling up my life Fill up our lives Fill up our lives You're an endless fountain Fill up our lives Fill up our lives to overflow with your love and your joy and your peace. You are the generous giver, your mercy overflows, your blessing is a river. On and on, on it goes. You are an endless fountain, your filling up my life. let it out, just let out your own praise. Don't hold back. lost and you gave me a home depressed and you gave me joy and now I can't help but worship you give you praise it just goes on and on on and on Sing out with me. On and on, Jesus, you be glorified. On and on, on and on, on and on, Jesus, you be Father, we praise you. You're a generous giver. God, you're so good. You don't withhold, Lord. You are the generous. 
today you're why we're here to lift you up to encounter you today come on can we just stir ourselves up for a minute I, I don't want to make something artificial I don't I don't want hype I want hope but sometimes we have to tell our flesh to wake up to praise the Lord David said praise the Lord all my soul all that's within me and I feel like sometimes I don't as a worship leader, give all that's within me. So can we just stir it up? Father, right now, we praise you. You're a generous giver, God. There's no one like you. There's never been anyone like you, Father. We thank you for your love, Lord, your sacrifice, your perfect plan, Father. You're the perfect leader, God. You lead our lives so well. Father, we say that we will praise you. That that commit it's a commandment, it's not just a verse that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. It's a prophecy that we will love the Lord our God with all our heart. And today we say we love you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you, Lord. We praise you with all that we have, God. You are so worthy. There is no one like you, God. There will never be anyone like you, Father. There is none beside you, Lord. Forever we'll be singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, who is to come. We stir ourselves up today to praise you, God. We say that we will praise you here in Santa Maria. We will praise you in spirit and in truth. We say that your eyes stop darting and look upon us because we praise you in spirit and truth. Lord, I thank you today that we are connecting with the heart of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit right now. We praise you, God. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Can we just sing that one more time? <laughs> you are the generous giver. Your mercy overflows. Your blessing is a river. On and on and on it goes. You are an endless fountain. You're filling up my life. My heart will sing your praises. Jesus, you be glorified. My heart will sing your praises. Jesus, you be glorified. My heart will sing your praises. Jesus, you be glorified. My heart will sing your praises. Jesus, you be glorified. Sing on and on. Oh, Jesus, you 
How you guys doing today? Good, good. My name's Kaber. Actually, before I say anything else, you guys want to meet each other really quick? Just say hi to a neighbor. Let's just get fellowship going on for a second. <laughs> hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> hey, My neighbor, Kaber. <laughs> Love you, bro. Go far, bro. Yeah. Amen. I love that. I love the bustle of the fellowship when we have that. I was thinking about this this morning. I was like, I, I, I haven't spoken a lot, so still a little bit nervous up here. So I'm just getting those nerves out. It's, it's interesting. I can stand before you guys and worship God because I know it's an audience of one because I'm talking to him. But today I'm, I'm talking to you guys. So it's a little bit different. So have some grace for me. Um. So today I was thinking, uh, before I even get into anything, I was thinking, okay, I got to make sure, do the Jacob thing, turn to your neighbor, greet. I love how he does that. I always hear his voice in my head saying that. Um, and I was thinking this, <laughs> this thing, what if we all had flashcards and the way that we greeted each other was just with, with flashcards? Hey, how's it going? And you're reading that flashcard. That would be so awkward, right? And, and all it says is, Hi, my name's Kaber, good morning, or something like that. We're never going to intimately know each other from reading a flashcard and a little, a little bit of information about yourself. I could put, hi, I'm Kaber, I'm Asian, I'm 26 years old, I've been married for a year. You know, th you're not going to get much out of that, right? <laughs> so um, what, what we're talking about today is intimacy. Um, and I just want to dive right into it, but first I do want to share a story. Um, I've been really contemplating intimacy for uh, the better part of, I would say, two, two and a half years. Um, I, I grew up a Christian. I was born into a Christian home. I gave my life to Christ when I was five, and I spent a period of my life uh, kind of running away from the Lord. Um, we all have that, the dark night of the soul. We all spend some time on that Damascus road. and um, Lately, he's been pulling me into this intimate relationship that this, is, this life is more than what we think it is. This life is more than building ministries and having a music ministry and playing the drums well and playing the guitar well and prophesying over someone. So, um, and this isn't to boast, but a couple of weeks ago, I got to lead someone to, to Christ. And uh, I know it's awesome. They, they, were, they were born into a Christian home, and they... Um, I, I don't think they really had any basis for actual faith. They just said, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. And uh, recently they they found some friends that they started meeting with, and they decided, oh, maybe I'm a Jehovah's Witness, or maybe I'm, I'm this or that, and they started questioning the Lord. I, and so in this conversation, we talked for about two and a half hours. It was amazing, actually. He was at work, and he was the only person there, so he was allowed to just sit there and talk with me. And he started opening up, and the Lord just made a way for a conversation to happen where I said, you know, what, where's your hope in, and, and what are you doing? And I said, well, I, my hope is based in Jesus. I get to do this for a living. I, I shouldn't even call it a job. Um, and, and the question arose to me because there's so many similarities between the, the Jehovah. They have Jehovah God. They have a Jesus. They have a form of a form of truth with no substance to it. It's all facts. And so I felt the Holy Spirit say, ask him why. Why, why do you do what you do? Why, why do you think that you are serving in this Jehovah Witness movement, whatever you want to call it? And he said, well, we have missionaries that go out in the street, and we, we preach the um, unending kingdom of da-da-da-da-da, and that there's this and that. And, and I said, yeah, but why? And he didn't have an answer when I actually hit him with that. And I think we need to, as the body of Christ, start asking why. We need to start asking those hard questions. So um, I told him, 
why I feel I serve Jesus is because I personally encountered this person. Uh, we're all accustomed to saying, oh, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. But if you look at, and I'm, I'm, hear, me, hear me correctly, I'm, I'm not bagging on the church. No one wants to beat up the bride of Christ. That's going to be bad news for them. But as Christians, we, we get brought into this amazing kingdom of God. We, we receive Jesus as our Savior. We're thrust into this kingdom of light, and we're made to feel like, just for, I think due to the enemy in our own flesh, the corrupted flesh, we're made to feel like there's so much stuff that we have to do. And this life is really about intimacy first and foremost with the Lord. And so I just started to tell him, I have this intimate relationship. I'm communing with Jesus. It, 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 it's touching my life, and it's different. And where I was going with that is quite often we get into the the that Christianese lingo where we start saying it's not a, a relation or it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And then when we search our own lives, I, I've searched my life and I've been a worship leader for the better part of 13, 14 years. In the last two or three years, I've asked myself, why? And where's the relationship, right? And so I'm just starting to see that there's, I've acquired a lot of information, but when I start plumbing the depths of Christ and how he's affected me, I want it to go deeper. And so I've been just burning with this question. So so my first question today is, what is intimacy? Um, intimacy defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is a state of being intimate or familiar with another person um, or an object. It's nearness, it's closeness, it's inseparability, it's devotion, it's deep, deep union. And that's, it's, been, it's been striking me so to the core. I'm like, how, how deep does this well go? Because we know that the well in Jesus is a never-ending well. He said, everlasting waters. They come, it's continuous. It's just everlasting flowing from within you. So I started asking these questions, where, why, how? Like, what, what is this? What does that look like? What does it mean? When I say nearness, and when I say I, I, I'm inseparable from you, what does that mean? So I've been asking myself this question, and just so you guys know, this is something that I'm I'm developing as we speak. So I, I'm I'm preaching from a place of working this out in my own life, um, and I think this that we all need to hear this. We really do. So uh, John ten thirty says, "I and the Father are one." It's just super simple. That there, it can't get any more simpler than that. This is a simple gospel that we live in, and I started to ask myself how. How can they be one without relationship? I just, being married for a year, if all my wife and I did was write little notes to each other and never have face-to-face -face confrontation, I, I don't really know her. I can tell you a lot about her, but if I've not actually encountered her person, it, it's all just information. That'd be like saying that Jacob has an intimate relationship with my wife and knowing her just by me telling him something about her. It, it doesn't work that way. And so I, I knew when reading the scripture that Jesus had this intimacy with the Lord that we, we have to tap into, that it's, um, it's utterly personal between us and God. Um, there's nothing careless about it. There's nothing shallow about it at all. This, this, it's a deep, intimate relationship. So we're just diving into that. Um, so I started asking, why is intimacy important? What does this mean to me? And uh, I, right away, I was like, well, Jesus knew how important it was. He constantly withdrew himself from other people to be alone with the Lord. And he said, I, I, I only do what my father does. And we can see from that statement that there's intimacy there. He, he, he's not reading. God's not sending some, like, you know, magical text to, to Jesus on a tablet of stone, and he's reading that. No, he has an intimate relationship with his father. Um. So this just started to hit me to the core. And if I offend someone, you guys can send all of your mail to David Kingsley back there. <laughs> no, this, this hits home for me. So I've been asking myself, well, what, what am I doing? Why am I here? And um, I, I started to realize that if, if I'm not doing things out of intimacy and out of love, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, without love, I'm a resounding gong. And without this intimacy and knowing Jesus, what we're doing is we're building 
it's a good idea. It's a great heart, but we're building a kingdom of man and then stamping approval that says this is the work of the kingdom of heaven. But if the Lord never asks us to do that, how much does it amount to? I'm not saying that it's worthless. I'm not saying that it doesn't have weight behind it. But take the story of Jesus passing by the guy at, at the gate beautiful. For three years, three and a half years of his ministry, he passed by this dude. And that dude was crippled every day for 38 years. That guy was there. So for three and a half of his years, he's seen Jesus, the miracle worker, walk by that dude and never heal him. And then Peter and John are walking by. And Peter says, here's what I do have. I'll give you this. Rise up and walk. Well, God, I I really believe that God told Peter and John to do that, that he had saved that miracle for after the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus wasn't told to heal that guy. And, And so my point is, it's not that we don't bear fruit when we do things out of what we feel is a right motive, but Jesus walked so carefully every single day. He walked carefully with the Holy Spirit. And I think that there's a commission to walk carefully and to be intimately knowing what he's doing, because otherwise we're, we're Martha. We're Martha making sandwiches that Jesus didn't order, right? And it is, I do that in my own life constantly. Sometimes I'm with my wife and I'm, I'm cleaning the house, I'm making dinner, I'm doing all this stuff. And, and she says, babe, can you just come sit with me? I, I'm tired of you cleaning. She never asked me to do that. I just think, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to clean. It's going to be really good. You're going to have an amazing dinner, and then I'm going to clean up. You won't have to worry about cleaning up. She's like, no, just come and sit with me. Come and eat with me. I just want to be with you. And that's why I'm finding myself right now in this walk with the Lord. It's intimacy, intimacy, intimacy. It's all about that inner personal relationship with Jesus. So am I going too fast for you guys? I'm a fast talker, and I've had two cups of coffee this morning, and I don't drink coffee. David, see me <laughs> on one. Um, so intimacy, it's not, it, it's not, and it will never be based upon knowledge. Um, does anyone speak multiple languages in here, bilinguals? Can you show, show hands? <laughs> kind of, sort of. So um, I'm just going to, I didn't think that you guys were going to actually get a, a Spanish lesson today, but I guess I'm, I'm just going here. So in Spanish, there's two words for to know something. There's saber and there's conocer. And saber means I know something about this. I know, I know where this piece of paper is. Um, it's right here. So donde, donde esta el papel, whatever you would say. You would say, oh yeah, I know, yo sé, means I know. Um, if I was going to say, I know Manny, I would say, yo conozco, because it's this inner personal relationship. You would never say, yo sé Manny. That would just mean, I know about Manny, or I know of a Manny. Um, and I think that the Lord is, is, yeah, I think that the Lord is calling us into this. He's saying, come and encounter and experience me. The Reading the word is amazing. We need this. But... When Jesus said in the desert that man doesn't live off of every word, that word wasn't logos, it was rhema. It was the spoken word of God. And that only comes from interpersonal relationship with him. So I just start thinking about that. I can read all I want about Jesus. I can do all the miracles in his name. I can lead people into salvation through Jesus. I could die a martyr for the sake of the gospel but what would it mean if I don't know him, if he didn't ask me to do that? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But we know, and this is just truth, we know that someone who is living outside of Christ, outside of this new covenant we're living in, they could give all that they have. But if they don't know Christ, they're, they're not getting into the kingdom. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, abiding in me. So that's where, that's, that, I mean, there's so much grounds for theological debate when you get into that, but we're not going there today. Um, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Mia, uh, actually, if you guys want to turn there with me, if you have your Bibles, digital, paper, it doesn't matter. Uh, where is that? Okay, let's just read that really quick. Not everyone says to me, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name? And did we not perform many miracles? And I'll tell them plainly. He says plainly, I never knew you. Away from you, evildoers. And this is, like I said, there's grounds for a lot of theological debate. And I, I'm, I've not gone there myself, so we're not going there today. But I'm just saying, this is an amazing scripture that says you can do all of this stuff in my name, but if I don't know you, depart from me. And I don't ever want to be found in that group of people that don't know Jesus, don't know the will of the Father. Like I said, it can be out of a great heart and still not knowing him. It, it just pierces, that pierces my heart. It's, it's scary. <laughs> it puts the fear of the Lord in you. Um, so I'm going to flip over to Philippians 3.7. And I just want to start looking into, let's move away from that and into um, that, the surpassing glory in knowing Christ. Philippians 3, 7 says, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever, uh, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For the sake of all, I've lost. I consider them garbage. That's amazing. I, I don't consider my guitar garbage. <laughs> that's, that's a hard place to be. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, but one that comes from the law. Um, or not having a righteousness of my own or one that comes from the law, but that which is faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes through knowing Christ and the power of his resurrection. Uh, and the participation of his sufferings, becoming like him in death. So somehow attaining that resurrection from the dead. This is, this is something that I've been sitting with him on a daily basis now and saying, God, I, I want to know your glory. I want to know what Paul meant. What, what brought him to this point where he realized, I, I've, I've been everything. I was a, a Hebrew of Hebrews circumcised on the eighth day, kept all of the laws, but I consider all of that loss, even after he came to Christ and his planted churches wrote most of our New Testament, what brought him to that place where he said, everything else is loss? Because it's really, it's really difficult when we're, we're based in material things and we're based in building kingdoms and not actually knowing him. I, sometimes we need to slow down in life and just sit with him. I, I've, I've been on this journey, like I said, for the better part of a couple of years and trying to teach myself to just sit with him and be with him. He doesn't even have to say anything. I'll just sit with him and say, God, just come and meet me. And I'm just going to reflect on you. I'm just going to think about your beauty, think about your glory. I'm not going to think about the next song that I write or the next song that I play or the next person that I'm going to minister to. Or how much I am or not prophesying, how many salvations I see. I just want to be with you. Let, ne, let me never be found among the people that don't know you. So that moves on to three, what does a life of intimacy look like? Um, and there's a lot of, we're kind of running down on time, so I'm just going to blow through these really quick. Um, Matthew 14, 13. I'm just going to look at some stuff. It's, it's in the Word. Um, sorry, Matthew 7.13. Um, well, here we go. Nope, sorry. <laughs> Where is it? Um, sorry, you guys. Give me a second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so we're looking at uh, Jesus' life, and I've, I've only got a couple examples where he just draws himself away. So Matthew 14, 13, when Jesus heard what had happened, he just found out that John was beheaded. Um, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. He got away with his father. He, he needed a process still as being divinely human and God. He still needed a process as a human. He needed to get away with the Lord and and. and go over what was going on with this. So he, he withdrew to a solitary place. Um, after this, the next verse is uh, 1423. Jesus walks on the water. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone. 
um, Mark one thirty five. Like I said, I'm just giving you guys reference to what Jesus is doing. Very early in the morning, Mark one thirty five says, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, he went to a solitary place where he prayed. And then Luke 6, 12, uh, one of those days Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray, and he spent the night praying to God. Um, and then John 15, it's one of the best, probably the best scriptures in the, in the Bible that we have. It's amazing, abiding constantly. I, I, I looked at some like 11 times in a period of 12 verses, Jesus says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. If you abide, if you stay in me, I'll abide in you and I'll bring much fruit from that. And apart from me, you really can do nothing. That's, that's crazy. That's every single verse he's reiterating. Sometimes the Lord will say something and he might only say it once and you better get it. But he's reiterating this 11 times in 12 verses, abide in me, abide in me. Abide in me. Abide in me. Come and know me. Come and dine with me. Come and just be with me. Because if you're not with me, if you're not, if you're doing things apart from me, it's just dead works. It really is, right? And and I'm not trying to cast condemnation. Um, I would hope that holy conviction would come to this whole room. And I'm not. I don't feel like any of us are not walking in this. But it's a good reminder to know that our calling is Jesus. Um, you hear that a lot, oh, I've got a calling to worship, and I've got a calling to the, the mission field. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, and then these things will be added unto you. And Jesus encompasses the kingdom. So our calling is Jesus. I, I believe that our destiny, is the fruit of our destiny, is whatever we're seeing in the moment right now. The fruit of my destiny is partly walking in worship ministry here. Um, 15 years down the line, it could be missions, it could be evangelism, but my calling will forever be Jesus and abiding in him. Amen. Yeah, so um, I, I just I just want to pray for a minute, and uh, actually, and as well, I want to tie this into, what does this mean for us getting healing today? This means we wipe away that, th there's, I almost feel like there's just a cloud that hangs over our eyes, it's that veil that was covering Moses' face, and it says uh, in the New Testament that to this day when the Old Testament is read, there's a veil that covers people's eyes. That interpersonal relationship with Jesus wipes that veil away. It, it, it tears it away. It, it completely casts it out. It says when, when someone turns to the Lord, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we with unveiled faces are beholding the glory of God as in a mirror. So we're looking in a mirror and seeing Jesus. So right now, I just, I just want to say, if you're looking for healing today, and this goes for myself, if we're looking for healing, that first step is, is the intimacy with him. There, it, it doesn't, it's not a be all end all. God, I've seen God heal people who are in complete blatant sin and don't want to believe him. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't hang on intimacy. But today, maybe that's a key for you. Maybe that's something that you can hold on to. There's intimacy. He intimately wants to know me. We sing it. You're so much kinder than anything we think you are. So he's got to come and wreck us. So let's just pray right now. Father, I ask that you would come and wreck us with your love, Lord that you'd come and remove that veil. I just speak to that veil right now. Come off our eyes in the name of Jesus. We just say that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we will abide in your presence. We'll abide in your spirit. Lord, that we're tired of building a kingdom and putting a stamp of approval on it when you haven't put your stamp on it, Lord. I'm asking that we would seek you as a people, as a holy people, righteous and called unto you and unto your son, Father, that we would seek intimacy with you. We would seek encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter. Father, I'm asking that there would be a grace for this people here in this room, anyone that's seeing on web stream, 
in the whole body of Christ, that we wouldn't be found in the multitudes, Father. We'd be found in that inner group. There was a reason why there was only 12. They intimately knew you. And I'm asking that that grace would come upon your people right now in the name of Jesus, that you would teach us what is intimacy. Teach us about communing with you, Father. Take us into a new season, Father. Give us a new wineskin where we can hold the wine of your spirit, Father. We can hold that fire within our beings, Father, that we can live in and out of the spirit, that everything we do is from the abiding presence in you. God, would you teach us what holy communion and union with you is? Father, would you come and touch every person right now? Would you come and touch every heart, Father? And we just say right now, I just, I just feel like we're just going to take 30 seconds and sit in silence. I'd like to do this. Uh, what we say, we fix our eyes on Jesus right now, just that 30 seconds of communing with your spirit, no matter how awkward it is right now. We say, we focus on you. We commune with you right now. That we, we, we plumb intimacy with you right now, just for 30 seconds. so worth it. You're so worth it, Jesus. You're worth our love and our affection, Father, and I ask that you would, again, touch every heart. We make space for you, Father. Give us the grace to make more space for you. Come and take us out of the box, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you guys for hearing me out. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Kristen, are you doing announcements? Just a video. We got a video and be blessed. Oh, yeah, and this becomes a soaking room. So if you want to talk, please take your conversations into the bookstore. Bless you guys. We love you. You know it. You can feel it. You were made for more. More than status quo. More than average. More than you've been told. More is bursting to get out. The Ignite Internship will equip 